So today is an extremely exciting day because I'm actually on my way to a Tesla supercharger and I'm not going there to actually charge my Tesla. I'm going there to test out Ford's collaboration with Tesla, basically charging Ford's EVs on Tesla superchargers. Now you might have seen in the news over the past couple months that not only are most manufacturers adopting NACS here in North America, which is the North American charging standard, but you might have also seen that Tesla has slowly opened up their Tesla superchargers to some other manufacturers, but now this partnership with Ford allows V3 superchargers to be accessible via the Ford application, and you can actually charge your Ford EV, whether it is the Mach-E or the Ford Lightning, at full speed with Tesla superchargers. So in this video, what we're going to do is actually going to go demo that situation out, see exactly what it looks like, get all the information on the adapters, and then also see what it's like to actually charge a non-Tesla on a Tesla supercharger and see what kind of also software implementation we have to see maybe how fast it's charging, what the rate of speed is, and things like that. So let's tag along and let's get over to this Tesla supercharger. It was very simple and I think that was the design and how it's supposed to work. The idea here is to plug and play with any type of Ford EV as if it was a Tesla charging on the Tesla supercharger network. Now, some things to take into consideration, it doesn't work on every single V3 one, but I believe it's about 98% of them domestically here in the US. It does not work with any V2 superchargers as of right now. So that is another thing to consider, but it will charge at the full speed of the 250 kilowatts. As you saw in the B-roll that I showed earlier or I'm showing right now, it did only charge at 99 kilowatts. And that's because all the 12 of the Tesla superchargers were being either used by Fords or by actual Teslas. So as we know, the more people that are using chargers at a certain location, the slower each one will charge. But all in all, this process was very easy, very seamless. You do not need to use Tesla's app at all. You can use Ford's first party app in order to just plug and play. And then in terms of how you actually get charged, Tesla is the one that's gonna be determining that charging price, depending on time of day, how cold it is, you know, where the sun is at the time. All just depends on a bunch of different variables in terms of where you are location-wise, time of day, and things like that. And Ford was telling me that they are not making any money off this charging. They're completely passing it through to Tesla. So it's up to them to decide how much they want to charge. Whether they want to charge more, that's up to them in terms of what they want to decide from an economic standpoint. So again, this is actually going live right now. So if you're watching this video, it has already started to happen as of 8 a.m. on February 29th. You do need Ford's proprietary adapter, which if you are a Ford EV owner, so if you own a Mach-E or you own an F-150 Lightning, then they will actually send you one of these complimentary that do start shipping at the end of March. And you have until, I believe, June 30th to kind of opt into that in order for them to send you one for free. And then after that, I believe on July 1st, then they're going to charge you. And I believe the retail price is $230. Now for the adapter itself, it's a pretty hefty adapter. Like it's, it's something that's very substantial. You can feel confident plugging it in, confident when it's being used. There's a bunch of safety and locking mechanisms to make sure that it doesn't just unplug itself or that it's not easy to unplug. You actually have to disengage the charging on the car itself. Then you actually have to unplug it from the actual car itself. And then you unplug the actual Tesla charger from the adapter itself. So there's a couple different components to it. But at the end of the day, it's still very easy to do and very easy to kind of get done. One thing I wish is that Tesla just makes their freaking charging cables a little bit longer because I feel like I was kind of stretching them no matter how close I got to it. But outside of that, very easy, very seamless process. So this ultimately is supposed to level the playing field. Now I do say like as a Tesla owner, it is very nice to have the supercharging network or it has been very nice. But for 95% of my charging, it's done at home. We do maybe three, four road trips a year where I'm using the supercharging network. But outside of that, I'm charging at home. So if you're somebody that doesn't really take road trips or you're just at home or within a certain you know 50 mile radius every single day, the Tesla supercharging network isn't really should or shouldn't be a determining factor on what manufacturer you go with from an EV standpoint. Now, if you're constantly on the road and you're constantly traveling, then this is going to open up your options hugely because now you can pretty much choose whatever car you want because Tesla is slowly not only opening it to Ford, but they're going to be opening it to other manufacturers. And then there's a bunch of other auto manufacturers that have already signed on to the NACS standard, like I mentioned earlier. So basically the playing field is opening up. But again, the psychologically, I think people want to have the Tesla superchargers, but for 90% of people, the superchargers aren't really something that you're going to be using on a day-to-day -day basis. But that's just my opinion. It's something that we can discuss in the comments. But now, like I said, it's going to be a very level playing field. But shout out to all the Ford employees that were able to make this happen. I'm sure it was tough to coordinate this. I'm excited to see what the future entails for Ford cars and just other EVs in general, because this is a pretty big stepping stone. And again, this is a transitionary period that they were mentioning because 
Ford is somebody that is signing on to adopt NACS by 2025 or 2026, I believe. So for right now, we're just using this adapters and then eventually, ideally, we can just plug and play as if it is another Tesla or any other EV. But that will just about do for this video, everybody. If you did enjoy, leave a little car emoji in the comments down below so I know that you made it to the end of this video. Leave some comments down below about what you think about this. So do you think it's a good idea that Tesla's opening up their supercharging network or did you want them to kind of hold on to it a little bit longer? Let's discuss in the comments. And if you are a Tesla owner, what do you think about non-Tesla's charging and taking up your supercharging spaces? Because I did notice that at this supercharging station, there were a few Tesla owners kind of looking around wondering why there were so many Ford cars at their Tesla superchargers when it should be just Tesla. So that's another thing that people are gonna have to deal with moving forward. But let's see what Tesla ends up doing. Let's see how people react to it. I think it's gonna be a net positive overall, but let's discuss in the comments. And until next time, everybody, I'm Fernando. If you guys wanna watch some other videos, click on one of these right here. And until next time, peace.